everyone was, it was so many rumors around Yannick, like, is he going to go to the Cowboys? Right. You know, of course, the Eagles wanted him, but we ain't talking about that. Is he going to the Cowboys was one of the questions. So the Cowboys thought they was big, hot, spicy stuff when they grabbed Everson Griffin, but nah, nah, nah. The Vikings had an answer, and they grabbed Yannick. And the Vikings and the Cowboys are matching up this season, and it's going to be so interesting to see. You know, you love to see guys playing their old team. It's going to be so interesting to see Everson playing against um, the Vikings for the first time when he's a Dallas Cowboy. And it's going to be interesting for the Dallas Cowboys to look across the field and see Yannick and see, oh, we could have that piece, but we didn't make it happen. Exactly. What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Dylan Matthews, and... Simone. Dylan Mills is somebody that I get behind. I'm not even going to cap on DeAndre Hopkins. He has the best hands in the league. Play it through it. Stayed hurt and play through it. it. Hobbling exactly. on back to the field. Right. I'm saying, when you, when you one of the best teams out there, you know, the other team's division, I ain't got no choice but to try and get like you. You dig? So, I'm... so let's get right into the video. Let's go. What's up? <laughs> so we back. Um, Dylan, hey, tell me what the going on. Man, what's going on today is the Jaguars going down. Sad, sad, sad. Man, I wish we had the Jags on our schedule. Right. That's a big old <laughs> fact. But the Vikings trying to get bad, bad, bad. The know? Vikings trying to get back to the um, NFC Championship. Right. They're not trying to, you know, be bad in a bad way. They're trying to get bad, 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 like young know, Ugg. <laughs> but um, the the um, the Vikings have traded for young up and coming pass rusher from the Jacksonville Jaguars and Yannick. How you say his last name? Is it Ngaku? Ngakwe? I don't really know. Mm -hmm. Don't All sound right. ignorant. Just say Yannick. Just Yannick. We'll go with Yannick for this video. <laughs> um, Yannick is on the is on the franchise tag, so it really is a good pickup for the Vikings for a couple of reasons. One, he's a good young replacement for Everson Griffin, who obviously is now a Dallas Cowboy. It's a low risk. <laughs> we know how you feel about them. It's a low risk, high reward deal for the Vikings. And the fact is, the Jaguars are actually going to pay out some of um, Yannick's franchise tag salary for this year. So they're going to retain about five to six million dollars of his contract. So it's basically like a one year, eleven million dollar deal for the Vikings when it, when you boil it down to something simple. So not a bad one year deal for a guy who is 25 and who, you know, has had some good numbers in his first couple of years in mm -hmm. the league. Um, and then, you know, you can resign him if you want and be yeah. so young. You can resign him if you want to. So it's kind of a you got a one year rental type deal. You can resign him to a long term deal if he, you know, works out. And if he doesn't, then you could just move on. So it's a good pickup for the Vikings and obviously a, a direct replacement for Everson Griffin, and I think they got a good young replacement, and they, the Vikings have actually done a really good job really quickly on um, replacing their guys. They With Stephon Diggs, they replaced him directly with um, uh, Tajay Sharp, who doesn't have to be the most productive wide receiver, because he's not, because they already got a number one guy in Adam Thielen. Also, Kirk Cousins like to go to Kyle Rudolph a lot. Um, they also lost Linval Joseph, who was a big um, piece on their D-line. They added Michael Pierce, who has one of, been one of the best run stop in um, D tackles and all the football the last few years. The only thing they haven't done very well is replace those cornerbacks so that defensive backfield could be looking a little sketchy for the Vikings. They haven't really found a replacement for Trey Wayne or Xavier Rhodes, who they both lost, who they lost both of them in free agency um, this past offseason. So the Vikings still have some, you know, answer uh, questions to answer when it comes to their team, but this is a good start for them. Yeah, definitely. This was a very good start for them, especially, like you said, losing that piece of Everson to the Dallas Cowboys. And what I love about this is Dallas Cowboys went and got Everson Griffin. And you know what? The Vikings bit right back and got somebody. <laughs> Take Everson, we'll get Yannick. Right. They bit right back. And the thing, crazy thing is when um, early in free agency, everyone was, it was so many rumors around Yannick, like, is he going to go to the Cowboys? You know, of course, the Eagles wanted him, but we ain't talking about that. It's one of the Cowboys was one of the questions. So the Cowboys thought they was big, hot, spicy stuff when they grabbed Everson Griffin. But nah, 
the Vikings had an answer and they grabbed Yannick and the Vikings and the Cowboys are matching up this season and it's going to be so interesting to see you know you love to see guys playing their old team it's going to be so interesting to see Everson playing against um, the Vikings for the first time when he's a Dallas Cowboy and it's going to be interesting for the Dallas Cowboys to look across the field and see Yannick and see oh we could have that piece but we didn't make it happen exactly but <laughs> while it's not all it's not all sunshines and rainbows for the Minnesota Vikings because while Yannick seems like a good piece, there is some questions around his productivity the past couple of years because, um, and shout out to you for showing me this tweet. So we know the Jaguars were, you know, on a look like they were on the up and up in 2017. Right. They had six pro bowlers in Jalen Ramsey, Yannick, Calais Campbell, Malik Jackson, Telvin Smith. They're all gone. But as far as it goes for Yannick, he did have some good help in the backfield in Jalen Ramsey and That's Adrian Bouye, who were at the peak levels of their peak levels of their prime and playing at their best when um, Yannick was on that Jacksonville Jaguar team. So that helped, you know, if guys is locked up in the backfield and those wide receivers can't get open, that gives more time for the pass rushers to get to that quarterback. And that's exactly what Yannick had. He had more time to get to the quarterback. So in 2017, Yannick had his best season with 12 sacks and 10 tackles for loss ever since that 2017 season when the Jacksonville Jaguars made the AFC Championship and they had all that talent. His sack numbers have gone down. So in 2018, nine and a half sacks, 13 tackles for loss. Um, and then this past year, eight sacks, also 13 tackles for loss. So the sack numbers have been going down um, since, that, since that 2017 season. So that's not a good trend um, if you're the Minnesota Vikings. But he still has stayed productive because his tackle for loss has gone up since 2017. He had 10 in 2017 and then 13 in 2018 and 2019. So he still has been productive, you know, not necessarily in sacks, but in tackle for loss, he's still getting the job done and being disruptive in that backfield. So that will be something to look out for to see if Yannick can get his sack numbers up now that he has Minval Joseph and, you know, Michael Pierce. And he still has Daniil Hunter um, on that other side of the edge for him so maybe they can kind of recreate he can get those sack numbers up but again the Vikings don't have elite cornerbacks right now they actually lost two elite cornerbacks who we haven't really seen the Vikings in place so that is the one you know kind of x factor to see if maybe Yannick was just good when he had good cornerbacks and maybe he's just going to be average but now that he has you know an elite defensive line um, to run with and rock with maybe he can get those sack numbers back up but Wait and see. Yes, that's a good point. Um, good thing for Yannick, he is still very young. Um, I saw Pro Football Focus was saying now that the Vikings um, added Yannick, they have two pass rushers on their team. I think under the age of 27, and Daniil, um, it was either age, under age 27 or in their age of 28. I want to say 27. Um, maybe even under, how old is Daniil? It might even be under 26. Um, how old Daniil is. I know he's not super old. I know he's yeah. Still- much in I want to say two pass two Pro Bowl pass rushers under the age of 26, um, and Daniil and um, Yannick, both on you know the edge, and that's going to be huge for them. Like you said, it'll definitely be interesting to see what they do with the secondary. Um, but hopefully, those two young guys can elevate each other. It's obviously going to be a big um, miss for them to lose Everson Griffin, um, but I think that. Yannick would definitely be a good compliment for Daniil since both of those guys are young and both of them are hungry and they see these stats numbers too and they're saying you know people are thinking I'm only good when I got a good secondary they're looking out for that too and the Vikings definitely would be definitely interested to see what they do they want to make any other moves because this is late in the season late exactly. in, um off season moves. <laughs> right and that was a big big move I wasn't even expecting that at all from them yeah, it seemed like Yannick was going to have to maybe fight it out or just hold out for another year or until, you know, however many weeks until they could find a trade partner. But they were able to find it um, right before the season started. So I guess it's good for both parties. They did. The Jaguars did get a conditional pick who could be as high as a third round pick. But that's the Vikings in the Super Bowl. And even though Yannick is a good pickup, I don't see him win the Super Bowl. But it could be a fourth round pick if Yannick. Um, does is selected at, uh, to a Pro Bowl as a you know first ballot Pro Bowl, not an alternate, but um, still. And also, I just want to correct myself. I said Limbaugh Joseph was um, still with the Vikings. He's not. He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> but yeah, it'll be definitely interesting to see how the Vikings shake out, if they have any other tricks up their sleeves, because the Vikings are one of those teams that keeps getting close, keeps getting close, keeps getting close, and then, you know, knocked out, um, you know, when it's time to make the real um, impression. So we'll definitely see, are they going to make another move? Will they make another play? We I didn't expect this move. So they can have some another trick um, definitely up their sleeve. Um I'm glad we don't play the Vikings this season only because they, you know, tore us up. <laughs> tore us up last year too, man. They, whew, they, they hit me around a lot last year. It was a sad, sad thing to watch. <laughs> we played the first game last year. It was tough, tough, tough. I was pissed. Yeah, so of course Stephon Diggs had one of his best games against us, but I mean our secondary was some buns at that point in the season. <laughs> it is good. Um, I wish they still had him because now they're playing um, the Cowboys this season, but hopefully um, Yannick um, pokes some holes in that brick wall of a line that yeah. um, the Cowboys have. Exactly, and I also want to bring up one more thing. Um, this Yannick, um, this Yannick deal could also affect. Their most important piece in uh, most most important piece on offense too, and Dalvin Cook because if Yannick balls out for the Vikings this year and they want to sign him to a long term deal, the Vikings don't got that much cap space, and they already been trying to work out a deal with uh, Pro Bowl running back Dalvin Cook this offseason, but that kind of them talks kind of came to a halt. So you know maybe this deal could if Yannick balls out and they decide they want to try and keep Yannick and sign him to a long term deal. This could play out to where they have to make a choice. Do we keep the running back who kind of carries our offense? He had 250 rushes this year, played in 14 games, 11, over 1,100 yards and 13 touchdowns. Wow. Keep the star on defense if he balls out. So that could make a big decision for the Vikings this, this, off, this next offseason too. Okay, yeah, we definitely going to be locked in. We're getting closer and closer to the season, guys. We keep getting sprinkled with little, little, little stuff here. First, we had the Everson move late. Then we had Earl Thomas late. Now we got another little nugget with Yannick. So hopefully we get one or two more gems before the season starts so we can stop talking about boring training camp stuff and get talking about real monster moves. <laughs> man, I'm ready, to, man. I'm just really ready to talk about some real on-the-field football, too. My, my, my. My palms is itching. Right. <laughs> it's it, it. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, of course, we're in our breaking news setup. Whenever we get these news that we got to get off quick, y'all probably will see us on Skype because we got things to do. We be working. I was so, grind. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I should have said that earlier, but if you made it to this part of the video, um, do your duties. Do your chores. Like, do, comment, subscribe. Watch this long. Obviously, you want to see more. So subscribe. Bye.